Well, as written in the paper, right, there's two statements that can be inferred from the second premise. Hogan, Hogan matter, just, give me, just give me the state, just give me the proposition and derive the contradiction. Well, proposition one really is what? Sure. Look, I'm not really sure how you expect me to give two propositions for an argument. Well, you claimed, you claimed, you claimed there was, it would be rejected on the basis that it entails a contradiction. So I I'm would like to yeah. look, I'm what proposition you, Look, I'm not understanding this whole, like, it has to be a syllogism thing, considering a horn of the argument we're talking about isn't in, a, isn't in syllogism. Well, if you, I just want to know, like, I, listen, you made a claim, right? You said that if the, on, an er, on error theory, proposition two can be rejected on the basis of entailing a contradiction. So I would like to see the contradiction demonstrated. Can you do that? Yeah, the, the contradiction okay. as Go ahead. is, a view affirms a given human is trait equalizable, to a given non-human animal while generating a feeling of disgust. And then the second, which is which creates the contradiction, is a view affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given non-human animal. Let me write this out. I just want to write it out. Um, it's, in view affirms it's in the paper. You don't need to write it no, I want to know how error theory, the, what proposition between that and error theory forms a contradiction. Your view of so The so paper you, is so. in, is, look, the paper deals with error theory. I'm not really sure what you think I wrote up. But the paper deals with the moral hypothesis I'm talking about. All right. About. I'm going to just continue writing this out. Your view affirms a given non human is trait equalizable to a human. Uh, so a human. Right there. Okay. So a view, a view affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given non human animal while generating a feeling of disgust. Proposition two, a firm who affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given non-human while not generating a feeling of disgust. Okay, so then if we were to write this out, um, a firm is a given human is not... Where does proposition two come from? What do you mean? The air theorist can hold to a view like that. Oh, what do you I mean? know they... Yeah, yeah, but I know they, I know they can't. But so can. But again, the my question to you. So I don't think you're tracking the question. So, okay. So we'll try again. So I understand an error theorist can reject P two. Like that's trivial. I am not contending that. What I want to know specifically is what is it about error theory which either allows them to reject P two or entails a rejection of P two if there is an entailment that other meta ethics don't have what is so obviously so for example what so hold on yeah so what yeah. is it about, so why can't i as an objectivist do this um while generating uh in, while generating a feeling of disgust or moral while generating a feeling of you know ne or while generating negative moral value let me say negative moral value while and while not generating negative moral value, right? Why can't I do fucking this as a moral objectivist, right? And just say, hey, P2, reject it. Cool. What about what, about what I'm saying thinks I think you can't do that? Because, okay. I'm merely, I'm merely saying, let me finish. I'm okay. merely saying... So we, agree, so we agree that error theory has nothing to do with this. Cool. So do we agree that it's just well, the, the, well, the object? That's not, okay. Well, that's not, that's not accurate either, right? Okay, so it's established why it's established why the formalization, aka the first horn, can be rejected under error theory. And what I'm saying is, if be, you, if you say, is, "Oh my god, dude, look," is the my question is simple: Can it be rejected just as easily on any other meta ethic? Probably, I don't see the relevance. Okay, cool. So why am I wasting my time with this? Like, because, just say premise to be rejected. Because you, because when we were talking in the inbox, you said you would then descend down the second horn of the dilemma. Correct. That has to. That's yeah, but that's regardless of whether it's error theory too. That has nothing to do with error theory. Wait, no, I don't think that's. The, I think there are particular reasons within error theory no. to reject the second horn. Wait, wait, but that's a different. Okay, but that's a different. Okay, fine, bro. But that's we can get Look, to that I'm, too. I'm not. I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding the incredulity. I want right? to know. I want to know. I want to know why I'm wasting my time talking about error theory when everything I'm saying applies to error theory just as equally. As any other meta ethic, do you That's think what any, I want to know. Do you think any other meta ethic would be applicable or, to the second horn as well? Um, do I think? Let me look at the, the second horn. Hold on. Um, but I, but so far, I haven't seen anything that would any less applicable. So let me see dialogue. Yeah, but that's um, you. That's you conceding yeah. there is a set of moral. Right. There's, that's you conceding 
unless I'm misunderstanding, mm -hmm. that there's a set of moral hypotheses that can flat out reject name the trait completely, even though name the trait no. pertains to wait, the moral wait, hypothesis. Wait, what? No, I can say, no, I said there's a set, I said within, there's a set of meta ethics that with people who hold the meta ethic can reject, um, can reject premise two of the deduction that was offered in one horn of name the trait. Sure. Um, yeah, that's what I'm, that's all I'm, that's all I'm conceding to. Oh, and that's okay. fine. Let me, let me clarify. Let's, let's make sure we understand the claim. Sure. I am saying, as an error theorist, right, one, you can reject okay. the formalization, the deduction tree. Mm -hmm. You can also reject the second horn, which is the, the dialogue tree, where mm -hmm. you would not, you would not go down the right side, because I'm looking at the thing right now, you would go down the left side. I'm saying both can be rejected under error theory, yeah, and, despite mm -hmm. error, and, and, despite name the trait okay. pertaining cool. to that cool. hypothesis. Now, now my question is, now my sure. question is, my question is, why am I even talking about error theory if this holds true for other meta ethics? I asked you if you thought it was the case that I do. Meta I think I, I think yes. I think I do. I think it's so an you think, objective. Okay, so you think there's a set of meta ethical views where name the trait directly applies to their view, right? Yet they can reject both horns of the dilemma. And by rejecting both horns, you just mean going down the for the second horn. You mean just going down the left hand side of the dialogue tree? That's what you told me in the inbox. So yeah, I would well, imagine. I, it's not well. Well, that's that's going. Yeah, the, if yeah. So name the trait doesn't show that. Like it's look, this isn't like so. Let's yeah. So name the trait isn't an argument that just basically oh the conclusion is veganism. Therefore, you know it works. You know veganism is it's sound I argument. Said that. I never yeah. said that. Yeah. So if you mean yes, so there is yes. So I just want to be clear. Yes, you can be a moral objectivist and go down the left hand side. And you can be just like you could be an error theorist and go down the left hand side. You could be a moral objectivist and reject P two of the deduction, just like you can be an error theorist. So you, so you don't think it's a criticism of name the trait to say that the argument applies to a meta ethical view, right? It's applicable. Yet both horns can be rejected, and it carries no force of persuasion. You don't think that's oh, a criticism? Oh of the no, 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 no. That that last part, that last part, I disagree with. I think it carries a lot of force of persuasion for a lot of, um. That, that part I definitely disagree with, but yes, I think there someone could hold a view, uh, whether they're an error theorist or whether they're an objectivist. Do you think um, the second? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. It's just latency. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Do you think that the second horn holds force of persuasion for an error theorist specifically? Yeah. Yes. Why? Because I think most error theorists have feelings of disgust that would be generated. Um, if they understood all of the facts at hand, and if they were given, the, and if they reflected on their valid, on their quote unquote things that would give them, discuss. yeah, but yeah, but by definition, in error theory, those things aren't going to be normative. They're not should statements. I, I don't, oh, yeah, but I don't, yeah, but when I say pot, when I say that they, it would be potent. I don't. I'm not talking about. Um, I'm not talking. I'm not even talking about normativity in that sense. I'm just talking about it descriptively. Well, I, I, I mean, I just, <laughs> I think, I think, I think persuasion. Talking, well, no, real quick, real, real, real quick. No, no, error theorists can be. No, 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 no. Error theorists can be persuaded without it, without one claiming that uh, that um, normative statements, normative propositions, have a truth value of truth. No, I'm saying. I take it. I, yeah, I'm saying mm -hmm. I take it that when you say persuasion, you're you're meaning that at the conclusion of some sort of conversation descending down the dialogue tree or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. The the error theorist is going to be compelled to do something. They ought to do something. Do you not think that's no. what's taken by, uh, to mean by persuasion? No. Uh, and if, unless you're talking with ought is just a, in as some sort of hypo norm that an error theorist wouldn't have a problem with any. I don't know what you mean by persuasion then. Yeah, okay. So so I just mean um, increasing the probability that your interlocutor would, would do what you are trying to get them to do. How? Um, yeah, but how? Oh, yeah. So, so well, I don't, I don't have to know how, actually. That's tangential. I just, you can actually just look at the, look at out, that's something that could be measured just by looking at outcomes uh, without actually knowing how. Um, so regardless, I don't even have to give you that answer. What right? do you, wait, wait, what do you mean by measuring outcomes? Like some sort of empirical yeah, so justification example, based yeah. on conversations with other theorists? No, yeah. So for example, um, if, someone, if someone were to, yeah, I mean, actually, um, that's the idea. Uh, li there's a little bit of nuance there that, that's being misrepresented. But yes, the general idea is that you don't actually need to know how in order to know if something is, has per is persuasive or not. An argument can be persuasive without knowing why or how it's persuasive just by measuring the outcome.
You yeah, imagine. Do you, you have? Imagine. Have you talked to a lot of era theorists who concluded by being persuaded? Um, I've talked to yeah, I've talked to some, and I was I was of the at least sympathetic toward era theory, if not just a subjectivist myself. When I, I was persuaded myself, so that's well, why I'm not, I'm not accusing you of being a liar, but you understand that merely being told that it has been the case in the past that era theorists have been persuaded, despite not holding to any normative statements, right? You but understand you that that's have data, listen, listen. If you're asking me if I have data, look, I don't have I don't have uh, any high quality data for this. All I can give you the best then data. Why I would I agree you. with you? Oh, you don't have to. I, I don't have, and you don't have, I don't have any data to persuade you. You don't have any data to persuade me. But however, um, if all you mean, if what you're saying is, if what you're asking me is, why would I think the argument is persuasive? I think it's persuasive because it's persuaded me and it's persuaded others. And it's persuaded, and it's persuaded others with, uh, with, error, with an error theorist view. Is and that so, anything more than it's persuasive it, because it's, it's persuasive? No, it's persuasive because it's because it is no. That's not true. It's the tautology. It's persuasive because it has uh, modified the actions of people um, toward what the the interlocutor wanted them to do. Yeah, I just have no reason to believe that. Yeah. Oh, you don't think that those things have happened? It's some degree of persuasion. The reason it has persuasion is there's a certain amount of people who the argument has modified their behavior. Yeah, and but you just told me you didn't have any data to support that. Well, no, I do have some data to support it. It's just not high quality data. It's enough data to support what I'm what I'm claiming, though, because I can say, look, it clearly has some degree of persuasiveness for some people who are error theorists, because there are error theorists who've been persuaded by it. Clearly, I mean, it's just trivially true. So There's if I if I said that that's false, what would you present as data then? An error theorist who's been persuaded by it. Look, if you if you want to say it has zero persuasive, it has no persuasiveness. What that would mean to me is that there. No error theorist who uh, can be persuaded by the argument. No, would, so would I'm saying. What are no, you saying? I'm, when I'm not saying it hasn't been. Look, I don't think you're a dishonest person, right? I'm not saying you're wrong about it being the case in the past that error theorists have been persuaded based on some engagement of the dialogue tree or whatever. What I am saying is that purely on its face, as a rhetorical appeal against an error theorist, given the entailments of error theory as a hypothesis, Neither neither horn of the uh, the dilemma, sorry, carries any force of persuasion, as far as I can see. And what you want to say okay. in response to that is just, well, it's persuaded people in the past, and I don't think no, that's no, even no, a no, no. What I, what I, what I want to no, what I want to say is that I don't think I, I, I don't I don't see any entailments of error theory for me anyway. Um, that if I adopt error theory, that I wouldn't be persuaded by it. Um, and it's just, and the question of who's right or wrong at that point is just, we have different intuitions and it's just an empirical question. Yeah. You've, you've, we've hit bedrock. There's no, there's yeah, no proceeding. Yeah, exactly. Yes. If, if that's all we mean by persuasion, then sure. Absolutely. We're going to hit bedrock there. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, unless you can, unless you can show me anything stronger than that. Unless you can say that you can derive a, contra a contradiction, and I'm not just saying that someone can have this view that like what you tried to do before. Well, I'm not um, saying it's impossible to derive a contradiction yeah. from the second horn. I'm just saying it's going to be difficult until it's formalized, right? As it exists, or, it's just a rhetorical appeal. Or you can, or you can show, or, or you can show that it's that it's it's false um, on, on on some nature. But like, I yeah, if, if all we mean, look, I mean, clearly, like you would have to agree with me here. Like, look, if all we mean by if it's persuasive is um, we can measure persuasiveness as, I don't know how else we would measure persuasiveness, by the way, we, as far as um, you have a, a given amount of people with this view and the argument is run or the dialogue is run and X amount of people out of X out of Y amount with this view uh, end up changing their behavior. Um, okay. If you have a different way of measuring persuasion, I, I, I'm, I'm all ears. Sure. What I'm asking is, what I'm asking is, aside from considerations like error theorists have changed their position in virtue of NTT before, or they've been persuaded before in virtue of NTT, mm -hmm. right? Aside from those considerations, do you mm -hmm. think that there's any part of the dialogue tree um, that applies to error theorists that would make them persuaded? Um, just, just in terms of like you know, think, cash, yeah, cashing think, it out think, as some formalization. Yeah, I think I think that depends on the error theorists. Um, what that, what things the error theorists would be disgusted or not disgusted by, and I think it's just no more or less of an issue of persuasion than a moral objectivist. That's but my if, honest take on. It. 
Sure. No, I'm I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to say, but if the era theorist says something like the set of things I find disgusting are, I don't know, just fill the set with obnoxious things. Like I'm not disgusted mm-hmm. by babies getting stabbed. Something something like that. Does that bottom out to anything more than just saying, well, that's not what most people would think? Um, it bottoms out to just well. It bottoms out to some one person saying, "Look, yeah, at some point, whether that and wh- and that's true, this is going to bottom out to the same thing. Whether it's someone who is, um, whether it's someone who is simply just committed to, like for example, if someone's just committed to uh, moral objectivism, and they say, like, I'm, a, it's objectively the case that it's good to stab babies, um, and that there's nothing, there's nothing that could persuade them off of that view. Just like if someone is committed to the view that, you know, I'm just not disgusted by stabbing babies. I don't think that there's any more or less per- I think it's just going to hit bedrock in both cases. Okay, and- let me, let me can I, do you mind if I present like a thought experiment? Sure. I'm an errant theorist, right? I think moral propositions suffer from presuppositional failure and are false. I tell you, you know, I'm a big fan of fucking stabbing children in the eye mm-hmm. or something. Your set of disgusting things is not the same as my set of disgusting things. In response to that, given that I'm an air theorist, is there anything that can be said other than, you know, you're a psychopath, you have r- ridiculous, read absurd views on what's what's disgusting and what's not disgusting? Is there anything further than that applicable to the air theorist hypothesis in that situation? Not besides, as besides, as like, like appeals, besides like appeals to what most people would take to be disgusting or not disgusting. Well, I don't think but I don't think the appeals are are I don't know what we mean by an appeal. I'm not saying it's true. If we're saying it's true because most people um would believe No, it, no, 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 not not be. true, not true, right? I'm just saying like we've bottomed out classic NTT situation. We've mm-hmm. bottomed out and all that's being said at this point is that like relative to the views of most people you'd be characterized as a psychopath or something like that. Like you just you're just your set of disgusting properties is so out there that you're gonna you're gonna be hard pressed to find. Yeah, people I mean, I don't know what else. Yeah, like I don't know what else I would. I look. There may be something else, but I not that I'm aware of. Just like and just like the same thing is true for an objectivist. The same thing is true uh, for an objectivist who is ideologically committed to some like moral objective fact claim that you know it's morally true. It's moral fact that it is a good thing to stab babies. And there's if there was no persuade, if there was if there's nothing I can do to persuade them off of that view. I don't know what else I can say to the moral objectivist who holds that view. Um, right. Other so than in, in the case that. of an era theorist, at that point, if we've, mm-hmm. if we've, as we said, hit bedrock on the, on a position like mm-hmm. that, the situation is one where the deduction tree relative to the era theorist is, is false. There's a false premise mm-hmm. and the rhetorical and also, the rhetorical, and also relative to the objectivist. Right, 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 right. right. And okay. the, the rhetorical cool. appeal, the, the mm-hmm. uh, dialogue tree, also fails in virtue of it just being an appeal to, mm-hmm. you know, what most people would construe as disgusting or not disgusting. Yeah, as, as is the case, as is the case with any, probably even more so the case with the moral objectivist, right? Because the moral objectivist, would, I would imagine, would be even, if I had to speculate, would be even less persuaded by the appeals to what most people would have. Because they would at least say that, you know, well, I don't care what most people say. I know I have the moral fact. I know, how, I, know I have the truth. So why yeah, is it? Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what what I'm asking. With- I, I cut you off. I didn't mean to. What was the question? Well, so what I'm saying, so the first point I want to make is the same thing can be said with a moral, with a moral objectivist. The moral, and I think the moral objectivist, if I had to speculate at, it, for the second horn of the, of the for the dialogue tree, they may even have more. Uh, they may even be more likely to be even uh, less persuaded than persuading an error theorist, because they can at least say that. Um, well, you're going to talk about, you know, how much, how like it, my view is crazy. I'm a psychopath. Um, a whole bunch of people are going to disagree with me. But guess what? I have the moral fact on my side. I have moral truth. And mm-hmm. my, so, but an error theorist couldn't even say that. An error theorist can just say, okay, well, this is me. I mean, like, but, but it seems like there's a stronger th- resistance with the objectivist. So, like, if anything, I would say, you know, maybe, maybe you, we should start with objectivism and not error. But then, so regardless, I don't know if that ends up hashing out or not. 
But well, sure. But like, I I guess what I'm saying at this point, given that we have agreement on that, is I don't think it ceases to be the case that uh, the air theorist has a legitimate critique of the argument, right? Just because it's the case that you know the sorts of considerations would just be made in virtue of what most people would take to be disgusting or not disgusting, right? It's still the case that you and I understand error theory is a moral hypothesis where NTT would be applicable. And yet, given that its goal, from what I understand, is to be persuasive, to show that there's some issue with their view morally, it fails to do that. Well, I don't know what we mean by um, by its goal. Um, I mean, in terms of like, when I run N the NTT, like I, um, I don't, I don't have the, I don't, I, I don't think I have the motivation to convert the person to veganism. Um, and when showing that there's an issue, I, well, I you at least like, have the motivation to persuade them of something being problematic in their view. More. Yeah, I, I have, I have the motivation. I, what I want them to do is I want them to reflect on their values. And I, cause I think that when they, I, run through the dialogue tree with them. Uh, what happens generally is, well, a couple things happen, but my goal is, that I'm doing it is for them to reflect on their values and to find that what they're saying is self-objectionable. Okay. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it works more often than not running this argument or running other arguments in my, ex in my uh, ex own personal experience for whatever that's worth. But my, but that is my goal. My goal is to have them reflect on their values and to and to try to honestly do that and see because I for a lot of people that I engage with that they would find the things they're saying if they really reflected to be self objective okay. um, whether they're an error theorist or whether they're a moral objectivist. Um, and by self yeah by self objectionable I, for the error theorist I would just mean like I'm reflecting on what I'm saying and like oh I actually find it to be disgusting what I'm saying or gross like in some in some sense. If um, after all the considerations that have been levied, yeah. the error theorist doesn't do that, and they're consistent, yeah. there's no yeah. contradiction or anything. Well, yeah, then, then that's it. Yeah, then then I don't. Yeah, then then right. I would. Have either, yeah, yeah. Insofar then, as that, then, insofar as that intention that you just described, you would have to say that you failed. Yeah. Well, I right. If if that yeah yeah, but that's fine. I mean, I I don't expect to, for the argument to give grant me success. Um, in, in all people I run the argument on. Like, I, I never came in with the expectation that I would uh, never fail. Um, I'm not saying when... that. I'm not saying, like, it's it's foolproof. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. there's, a, there's, there's a situation where the argument is applicable, yet there's a realistic and, and consistent scenario in which you would of fail. Course. Of course. Look, of, uh, well, of course. It's with, that's, look, this is going to be, look, if we, when we're talking about that, that's going to be with many arguments. Uh, if that's how we're measuring success and failure, is having the person reflect on any so many moral arguments, this would be the case. I don't it's, see not, how it's, that... it's not just that it's not just the case that the argument is like is is failing. It's that not only is the argument failing, but the person you're arguing against against is consistent. There's been no like contradiction. Well, no, I, 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 the goal. Well, no, no. Of course, someone could be consistent. Like that's, I'm, that's not impressive. Like that, that doesn't like. I'm I mean, not saying course. it's impressive. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I grant. I grant. Like this is like this is like been hashed out like many many times. Like we like no one who who is positing NTT is saying that someone cannot consistently stay to a non-vegan position and wouldn't be persuaded off of it. Um. I don't know if, if anyone's told you that. I mean, that's like all that's all my goal is is, and all that seems to be happening um, more often than if I use other arguments is just that the person does tend to more often than if I were to invoke other strategies to reflect on their views and find themselves objectionable. That's all, and that's a process I'm just engaging in, and that's a process that works for some and doesn't work for others. And it seems to be, I don't have hard data on it, but it seems, it sure seems uh, more effective than a whole lot of other uh, strategies that I employ in that process. And that's all, that's all that is, that's all that there is that I'm doing. Do you, I mean, that's fine. I don't, I don't think I'm going <laughs> to, that's not problem. Matt. Do you grant that the error theorist, given everything we've talked about in that scenario, would have a legitimate critique of the argument? Or do you just think they're saying, eh, whatever, it doesn't apply to me, fuck off. Because I think it's the former, right? I think, like, oh, I understand. No, I, if, if, well, I don't know what you mean by critique. If, if by critique you mean... As in, like, they have a reasonable... That was almost a tautology, reasonable yeah. reason. They have a reason to think 
if it's it's not going to be applicable despite it encapsulating their position more. By encapsulating, I just mean it deals with their position, yet they have they have good reason to think it's not going to apply. Um, Succeed, if that's, if, yeah, if that's what you mean by a critique, um, if the, well, well, I actually want to know what you mean by reason. Then, if if by reason you just mean that they're yeah, that it just, just doesn't align reason. with their it, w- yeah. yeah if by reason it doesn't align with what they what with what they, what makes them disgusting or not disgusted, you know. Um, well, it's it's, that, it's 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 not not only is it that it's it like it's there's going to be a failure in the left side of the dialogue tree, but it's also the case that they, from their view in this case, error theory, find premise two to be false. Right? That's both that's both horns of the dilemma being outright rejected with good reason. Like I take the, I, what's I, the, I take any, what you, sorry. Go ahead. I just want I want I want clarity on what. You, so the question is. Do I think? I'm sorry. So your question is: Do I think that there's good? Um, someone can reject uh, um, the argument uh, with, or come? Do I think that someone can come to a non-vegan conclusion with good reason? Um, and I just so what? And good reason means what? Well, I don't know about that. I'm just saying. Do you think it's the case that somebody with a position NTT attacks would be reasonable in their rejection of the argument? I Given guess I just don't know what. Yeah, I guess I just don't know what what reasonable means there. Um, like, there's no there's no logical flaw in what they've said. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, I think someone can re- reject. I think someone can reject uh, NT uh, and and just about every moral argument. By the way, like this doesn't separate NTT from like any other moral argument. I think someone can reject just about any moral argument um, without a logical flaw. There's just certain entailments yeah there's just again like there's certain entailments that i think most i think a lot of people if not most people would find self-objectionable if they bit the bullet on those entailments and i'm just going through an iterative process with those people to, and engaging with them and trying to tease that out and yeah but all work. you mean by biting the bullet is that they're yeah. weird. is that they're weird all you mean by biting the bullet yeah, is I mean, that biting, they have a- yeah biting well biting well not necessarily no 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 because someone can but when bite the bullet, I, can, I mean, because there are people who bite the bullet and then reflect and be like, oh, wait, why the hell did I bite the bullet? Like, that's actually self objectionable. So I'm not, it doesn't sure, just mean that they're. Right, weird. yeah, yeah. They can have a change in opinion later. Right. I'm just saying at the right. time, if they say, well, if they, if they quote unquote bite the bullet, you're just saying that's a view most people don't. Oh, no. If, if they, if, if, if most people include their future self, yeah, that's that's not just saying that. Like that, it's different. No, no, no. We're just like, talking. We're just talking about the, at the time, right? Uh, if you okay, if you if you well, do the shtick with right. me, and I let me explain. If you do the shtick with me, and I say, uh, you know, I don't find that disgusting, something like that, and you say something like, "Well, most people would," right? Barring any future reconsideration of my position. It seems like, as we said earlier, that's just where it bottoms out. At that point, you're, you move on to another argument if you're trying to persuade them of something. Or you just say, okay, well, you're strange, but you're, you're consistent. Well, that's, I don't just say that I'm strange. I think, I think, well, I think you'd be strange not to uh, with disrespect to other people. I think, I, I do say that I think you'd be strange with respect to yourself or your future self if you reflect on it. I say that too. So it's not just, the, the issue is not just that I'm saying that you're weird with respect to other people. Uh, at the time, I say that, um, and if you want to say just with now, I can, you know, we can go into B theory of time memes, and I actually don't take the view that there is just um, the only thing that there is is a now. So it's it is the future person as well. I'm not a fucking um, quantum physicist, okay? But yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, no, but uh, but but that's I know I'm I'm, I'm being a little nitpicky, but right. but but to be clear, like it's not just saying they're weird with respect to other people. Like I I do try to make the case that I think that they. And oftentimes are weird with respect to their future self when they reflect on their on what they're saying, and sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. That, that's all. And I don't and I don't. I'm still not clear on like what a, a reason, like what someone being reasonable would be, um, if we don't hash it out in terms of like either a, um, a hypo like, Well, I, just I don't, say something. Just say something like no contradiction has been exposed, and through the dialogue tree, all that's been said is. You know, you have a strange view, which they don't find to have any force of commitment. Mm-hmm. So at that point, why would we not say they have good reason, at, at least at that point in time, well, I don't to think not be persuaded? That, I don't think that's sufficient for giving for 
for making um, a given a view uh, have good reason just because it doesn't entail a contradiction and because they can, um, I'm sorry, what was the other thing you said? Reject something in the, in a dial, in the dialogue? Well, yeah, the dialogue tree isn't persuasive or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what, I, I don't, I don't take it to be that not, not having an internal contradiction and um, rejecting something entails reasonability. Um, that that's the sufficient criteria. I'm not, for I'm not saying I'm not saying they have good reason to maintain their position. I'm saying they have okay. good reason not to accept the thrust of NTT at that time. Okay, so what do we mean when we say good reason? Well, I just yeah. outlined it. Well, if you uh, the deduction, uh, well, the deduction you, tree, the deduction tree is rejected. The dialogue tree is rejected. Yeah, but I yeah, but but then the question is, what do you mean when you say they have good reason to reject? What do you mean? It, look, if if well, if, you're the one who uses the term. I'm really, really, you're the one who you, who said, who asked the question. I'm just I right, clarity right, on what you mean. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All I mean is, you're trying to persuade them of something, right? The mm -hmm. first the first part is you go through deduction. They reject P two. They have, you know, there's no issue posed by rejecting mm -hmm. P two necessarily. And then you're like, all right, let's go through the dialogue tree. They it ends up like you said we get to bedrock. They just say, okay, well, all you're saying is that I have a strange view. That's not persuasive to me. Mm -hmm. At that point, mm -hmm. if they make a statement like, yeah. I don't find NTT to be very compelling. I don't find it persuasive. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you think they're justified in making that statement? I I don't know what would um oh ju justified in making this. I don't know what I feels like. It's just that's a replacement word for reasonability. I don't know what we mean by that either. Um, justified for making the state that statement. I, what do we mean let's by justified? Like, sure, what would, let's ask this then. If I made that statement to you after we went through that whole <laughs> thing, what would you say in response to me? Do you is there some additional attack that can be made in virtue of that statement? Being, or is it just like okay, I don't think there's a problem with you saying that. Let's move on to another no, argument. No, I don't. Think, I don't think, yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I I'm not aware. I wouldn't be aware of uh, a logical problem with what you're saying. Um, I don't. I don't That's think that I mean. entails that you're. Well, no, no, no. Not having a logical problem. I it, look. If if what you mean by being reasonable just means there's a, no logical problem. If that's all you mean by being reasonable, then you're you're talking about it in a very different way than. I mean, uh, then that's fine. I just I don't get. I didn't get the impression. That I don't know what people mean when they. Well, say even that. on, even, on even outside even outside the purview of like prop logic or or whatever. All again. To that person. You're, all you're effectively saying is your set of disgusting things is very different from what most people have in their set of disgusting things. So and, maybe, what, and what would I suspect? And what would I suspect you would have if you reflect on? Right. Just add that. Just add that in because it seems like it seems like so you're adding. You're adding the. Yeah. You're adding the additional consideration that yeah. you think it's likely that they'll do some reflecting later and realize that their set is kind of strange yeah. or weird understanding that that's understanding that that won't always happen but i'm but it's just it's it, all i'm saying is it's a mischaracterization because people say this a lot about entity like it's a mischaracterization when people to say oh well all you're saying is that you, you know most people disagree with you or all you're saying is that you're weird with respect to other people like that's not true. that's not that's a, that's a mischaracterization of what's being said what's no, being, i mean I, I wouldn't reduce it to just weird i'm saying like it is the case that most people find those things disgusting. Well, you do not, so I think it's likely that you're probably going to do some reflection later and not be weird. If you don't, then whatever. It just seems like it's more likely you'll reflect than not, is what. Right? I don't know. In your experience, in your experience, more people have reflected and yeah. realized that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. But that's. But notice how that's very different than just saying, "Oh, well, you know, you just have a very different view than other people." Yeah, or I you, agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean that's so uh, so that's the process. That's what um, that's what I'm what I do. And I, you know, as far as arguments go, um, I really I'd like to have good data. I don't. Um, in my personal experience, I've been running vegan arguments for a very long time. I've been running a lot of different vegan arguments for a very long time. And so far, uh, for me, um, and even if the, it's not the case for others, on average, if we had big data, but for me, um, this has been the one I've had with the best success rate. So um, maybe there's something about, may, maybe that's not something intrinsic to the argument. Maybe there's an interplay with the way I do it. So maybe it has something to do with me in addition to the argument. But for whatever reason, for whatever my hypo norm is, uh, it seems to be the most apt at succeeding. Sure. 
Absent, um, right, but that's that's important what you just said, though. Like, absent mm -hmm. any data that would suggest otherwise, I don't even know how you'd go about that, but is the, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like there's reason to think it's something in the argument that's persuasive versus, you know, the way Dr. Avi presents it to people, his rhetorical abilities. His, yeah, that's, his that's, under, that's under, yeah, that's under determined. Um, there, right. There's an under determination. But regardless, um, if, I, if I do have, regardless of whatever the reason is, um, you know, if it, you know, if it was written out versus, uh, you know, how many people, you know, if it would be persuasive compared to other arguments that are written out versus if I were to argue the argument, how persuasive would be compared to like others, uh, or, or if, uh, if I were to argue something else, whatever, whatever it comes down to, so long as I know that, so long, or at least so long as I have a reason to believe, um, on the highest, even, although admittedly weak evidence available to me that this is, has the highest success rate. Then if you agree I don't, right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Then if it has the highest success rate of the arguments I run, I don't see any reason. If I have the hypo norm uh, to engage in this, I don't see why I would not run it. No, I don't. I don't disagree. That's if that's mm -hmm. just you saying I'm justified in using NTT because of my success rate. Sure, but that's as you just said. That's not the same thing as saying there's something persuasive in the argument itself. It could just um, be. I don't know, it, it could just be. I don't know, yeah. It could just, it be, could just be something yeah. or yeah, or it could be an or it could be a synergy between the two. It could be a synergy between the way I run it and what it is in it of itself. I don't know. Like these are all like, and but this these things could be said with all sorts of arguments. Uh, why people accept certain or what makes it persuasive or not? Like in total service of normative arguments, anyway. And this, normativity is a mess. I mean, we all know this. Um, yeah, of course. A lot of this could be said with with all sorts of moral arguments. So. Um, yeah, I mean, so I don't. Yeah, I, so I mean, look. Bottom line, what I, there's two horns. The name of the trade is uh, has two uh, pathways. Um, now you're familiar with it. Yesterday you weren't, so I'm glad you are today. Um, and I don't know what makes it persuasive for the people it persuades. I, I don't have an account for that. Um, I do know there are some amount of people that it persuades, and I do know that um, in my experience. I've had more success at persuading people with it uh, than with other arguments, and so I just don't see why um, why I would adopt a different argument in its place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If that's all you're saying, I'm, I think I'm satisfied with that. It's fine. Yeah. There's no objection there. If you if you know if I have more success talking about fucking Fruit Loops and somehow I it, it's comporting with my goal of convincing people that atheism is true, right? Then I'm gonna continue you, fucking using. You would talk loops. about. Food. You would talk right. about. Right. Yeah. That's, that's not. Food. That's not contentious. Yeah. Of course. Um. But but I don't know. But I don't see. Here's the thing. But like I don't see, um, anything that would separate that from any other moral argument like this, because I don't. Because I think when anyone's talking about any moral argument, or at least the majority of them, I think that is really what is being done. I think there's some sort of hypo norm there that's motivating people, um, and I think that. What people are going to end up doing is going with whatever arg argument in that realm that uh, achieves whatever hypo norm, assuming they're ra assuming like you know they're rational. Of course, and, and by rationality, I just mean um, doing what would um, most likely achieve their hypo norm. So I don't see this as any different than any other moral argument, unless there's some sort of major you know symmetry breaker that someone can bring. Okay, I'm satisfied. Okay, cool.